Hi all, Neo off here. Thank you for joining me for yet more of my babblings. This one on the third hermetic law, or principle of vibration. If you haven't already seen my videos on the first and the second, you may want to go ahead and do so, though it is not necessary, of course. However, some people consider the first three of vital importance and even the latter four as being derivatives in a sense. I don't know that I would fully agree with that but anyway I'm currently in the process of doing a little bit more research on that and other relations of, of the seven in general. There are many correspondences that can be made to these seven one of which, because it's a good model, in my opinion, is that of the chakra energy system. So we could correspond the first hermetic law, for example, mentalism, to the crown chakra. The second to the third eye chakra. And then today's topic, the third hermetic principle, the law of vibration to the throat chakra. In some religions, it's stated how the world was spoken into existence. Sound came first. Now I'm going to simply quote the first few lines of the King James Version of Holy Bible. And please note that I'm one of those types that, that doesn't care too much for the labels. So understand I don't claim to be a Christian nor any other religious label, though I don't even like the word spiritual. To be, to be honest with you, uh, but I guess that's what I would have to pick. Though, at the same time, uh, I associate with all of these common labels and see a lot of good in all of them. And I have, in fact, uh, put myself in that specific category of Christian. Uh, I just found problems in different people's definitions of that. Regardless, I think they all have value and we can obtain unity when we can accept all the good aspects of each other. There are a lot of excellent spiritual texts. Holy Bible is, in my opinion, most definitely one of those. So, as it starts with Genesis 1, of course, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. So the earth had no physical form. I'd add the universe, multiverse, whatever, it had no physical form, perhaps. Then God moved. That was the first thing that happened. God move and enter the hermetic law of vibration and the next thing God said and there's uh, our throat chakra in combination with that let there be light so sound comes first vibration waveforms that which we don't typically visually see unless via reflection of course such as in a water puddle but we can most certainly sense vibration, feel vibration, and experience these vibrations throughout our bodies, and enjoy them when listening to music, for example. Enjoy them when we get a good vibe from another, whether, and there are multiple levels of those types of vibes that we can sense. And we can look at this law from perspective of electromagnetism as well. So if you were to pick up the Kabbalion, you can get a full definition and then some. Uh, you could also go to my, my site, neowealth.com. I have more specifics there. But for now, and in, in a, a very brief summary definition, nothing rests. Everything moves. Everything vibrates. Now, for fear of stating the obvious, even when you're perfectly still, you're moving, 
vibrating and resonating at different frequencies, depending on what we're measuring, of course. We can measure our brainwave frequencies or the electromagnetic toroidal flow of something, or we can measure our heartbeat rate and, and get a value from that. We could measure a single cell, uh, given the technology and tools to do so, of course, and viewing that cell as an entire system in itself inside of our body and get values for individual cells and their components. Some number, right? So when we're looking at a frequency, we are looking at a specific number. And if we wanted to go a step further, we can conduct mathematical operations on all of these uh, waveform addition and, and get yet another combined frequency value. We could run any algorithm on them, right? So uh, this is a good example of the, the fractal or holographic nature of things. There's a lot that can be discovered about ourselves in terms of spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical health that vibration plays a, a huge role in, as it does in our other bodies. So here's a simple definition. Nothing rests, everything moves always, even your coffee table. But it too is moving, regardless of whether or not we see it doing so, it is moving. All of the electrons are simply more densely packed. There's a measurement often used in chemistry labeled entropy, which is a measurement of chaos in terms of how these electrons are moving about in a system. Now, me mentalism would tell us that if I believe strongly enough that I could put my hand through the coffee table, and I'm talking about without trying to use force, just sliding it through, that I would actually do so. I could float right through it. But we're here today for the law, the principle of vibration. So let me refresh us on a few basics that subjects that are directly related real quick. Frequency and time are inversely related. Some would say that space and frequency are also inversely related. This chart, for example, shows how the larger an object is, the slower it moves, vibrates, whereas the smaller it is, the quicker it vibrates. I would say this is in general, because we, we all have a potential range, I believe, of frequencies that we may access or tune to. If we view a simple tuning fork along with how it resonates, we can see the ebb and flow of this. And higher notes resonate at a higher frequency. Note in this image how the higher frequency, the more hits on the middle line, zero crossing at a point, the balance or the middle point that intersects with that line. You'll note I stated resonance, but have also been stating things like frequency, waveforms, space and time. Let's brush up real quickly on all except for the last two. And yes, I'm referring to some good old mathematics. I'll be brief, I promise, and it's simple and you'll get it. So here it is. Here's an image of your standard sine wave. This type would be considered along, whereas a digital type, uh, one or zero, boolean, it's either on the line or it's not, would be better represented using uh, a square wave form. The sine, of course, is more flowing and analog and natural. If the red line was inverted, we could consider it cosine, or it's, or, or we could say its phase has shifted by one cycle. Here's 
here we can see the measurement of amplitude and also one complete cycle of the waveform. This graph uses a common system of nine points. Now there are nine points, but given that this this thing loops, right? Keep it. This is just one section of it, one frame, one hologram. There are, of course, only eight spaces in each wave cycle. That is only on this particular graph, of course, and we could divide it however, however we want. But given I'm a fan of both math and numerology, I'll ask that you look at the digital root of each division. To do this is very simple, so if you don't already know, let's take 45 degrees as an example. It has two digits. Add them. It's that simple. You do this until you get to one digit. So 45's digital root is 9. With larger numbers, we simply repeat the process until we are down to a single digit. Now, there's an error in the 8th slot, which should be labeled 315 degrees, not 325. Uh, they're supposed to be, I would imagine, supposed to be equal divisions of 45 degrees. We could have chosen to only make four divisions using five points instead, which of course gives us the system of the pentagram pentagon, which we can easily see as being directly related to sacred geometry um, as a good representation of the fractal nature of all things. So the frequency is the number of times this cycle loops. This is a linear graph, of course, but know that this waveform is directly related to the circle and could be plotted on such using the numbers 0, pi divided by 2, pi, 3 halves pi, and then back to 0. In objects or waveforms, frequency is a measurement of the number of times it cycles per second. So let's know what we mean by a cycle. And I'm throwing in an amplitude as well here. What we see in red, of course, is, is one cycle. And it loops. And this loop, from a linear perspective, isn't necessarily fractal, right? just repeating its repetition for for that we need other depictions such as the star or take this image of seven harmonics we can put each inside and can continue of course for all seven but all could also be placed outside now if we take that concept add another dimension to it, we might be getting close to a better definition of uh, fractality, right? So frequency is measured in hertz, and it, it's number of cycles per second. But we also have a formula for resonant frequency, or uh, simply resonance. And in this, we can see again how the number pi is directly related so that's it for now with the, the math and, and numerology stuff. Maybe a little more numerology, we'll see. I'm going to next, though, touch on uh, semantics a bit. Uh, then on music, even. But I will attempt to leave most of the solfeggio and isochronic number stuffs for another video lesson. And finally attempt to tie them all together and discuss how it relates to our minds and bodies. In a type of, of cymatics, a flat metal plate is used and sand is placed on it. Then a bow, like a, like a bass or cello bow, is used to strike the side. Depending on the resonant frequency, a different pattern is then formed by the sand particles that can be seen on the plate. There are 
semantic devices which allow the frequency to be adjusted to whichever number within range, of course, I'm sure. So we can then apply all of this to other objects as shown in some famous exper experiments using water, for example, some of which depict directly how our minds affect water particles. Even This is very important because we can implant different mental energies into things, different intents. We can make holy water if we were to simply say a prayer and or have some meditation time perhaps, even if it's brief, over the water, thinking thoughts of love. It's it's part its physical particles will will change over time into different shapes depending on our intent and and what we do. Here we see depicted a mentalist affecting the vibration of the water all around her. In certain magical schools, one or groups may chant um, or um, supposedly the first AUM corresponds to the crown chakra and the latter OM to the third eye. In uh, people use this in, in many healing and bless and or blessing rituals and others. Here are some wheels produced frequencies that are uh, de delivered via a piano. Now most people have probably heard of binaural beats where headphones are used or hemi-sync, isochronic tones, soft edge systems and the like. These, if I'm not mistaken, would all fall under the umbrella of brainwave synchronization. Or could, at least. We could perhaps, you know, we could synchronize other things even, I'm sure, but anyway, a frequency that lies in the high theta or low alpha, for example, could be applied to a stereo waveform and listened to via headphones. And after a set length of time, maybe an hour, I don't know, our brain will cycle to that same frequency. And it will shift. And it's we can measure it. We can uh, see it, even. These are frequencies, and as used, where depicted here, the left male brain, value 315, which digital root of 9, is subtracted from the feminine right brain value 325, digital root 1, to result in a 10 hertz, also di digital root 1, frequency. We could, of course, play with these two main variables, the male in the female hemispheres, but also with multiplication, or we could cube them first, or whatever formulas, operations we want to apply. I started a couple different scripts for uh, these types of calculations, which I may end up posting on banishedarts.com, actually, at some point. Which and know, know that that site is live, but it is it, yeah still under serious development. And or I may post it on spiritualoverflow.com, and the same applies with that website. In my opinion, it seems obvious that our feminine side is our divine mother and our divine connection to our higher self. Though, mental seeds must be planted too, of course, right? So, what happens if we were to flip the numbers for this, uh, for, for that one slide? I'll probably research that a bit more right after this video, actually, and perhaps make a part two. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I might also add common values used. 
I know off the top of my head, a few include 528 hertz, uh, digital root of 6 on that, 936 hertz, which has a digital root of 9, and 417 hertz, digital root of 3. But of course, these range you know, much higher and lower, and a lot of different numbers, and people actually correspond these different frequencies to different forms of healing. The frequency of standard tuning used to be 432 Hz, digital root 9, but it was changed years ago to 440 Hz, which has a digital root of 8. Now we can map all possible notes used in music to any system of 12 digital root 3. So this pig, for example, corresponds each note to a color, but also to its phonetic sound, and also to a uh, western astrological zodiac sign. We could also map different scales, or for example, just the white keys, or just the black keys. The seven unique white keys could correspond directly to the chakra energy model. The five unique black keys could correspond to the pentagram, the pentagon, and more. I simply can't avoid a, a tad of the off the cuff uh, numerology, so bear with me. But I, I see in the 12 the correspondences in this pick, of course. But also the dodecahedron, one of the uh, platonic solids, the one that uh, corresponds to the elements of spirit, that would be our, our connection, or spirit. Anyway, of which there are five elements, of course, and we have five black keys. I see the number five as the balance point as well on the, uh, the sinusoidal curve if we plot with the nine, the eight spaces. And it also, the number five also corresponds to Geburah on the Tree of Life model, the uh, pillar of severity in general, perhaps. Planet Mars, accidents like war, but also simply change, and not necessarily for the negative. But this would depend, of course, on the perspective of the situation in question and who's evaluating it. Then we also have the seven white keys, right? And I, I see in that number of the uh, elven star, but also the sub numbers of four and three are important, of course. The, the four I see is the elements excluding spirit, main astrological and geographical cardinal directions, general stability and the seasons of course for the number three I, that's every trinity but also it's back to the 12 that's the digital root of it in the zodiac the uh, triplicity of the sign being either cardinal mutable or fixed also so let's move on to how frequencies affect our brain and specific subdivisions of them Again, often used in brainwave sync, commonly known as brainwave states. So here's a grouping of four brainwave states. I would agree with most of the words used on this image, however, would stress a couple of things. Though beta may be considered normal, I say they all are normal. They may be correct unfortunately that in a sense that m most people are in beta most of their waking hours experiencing little time in alpha but and then beyond that they're just asleep i'd also add that in beta we may be more on guard and also a lot of thoughts bouncing around Though we're getting things accomplished, we're working, we're uh, you know running around doing everything. But this is also where stress and anxiety and fear can start to occur. So 
but wait, there's more. Here's a system with five that includes gamma, which I, I would say is actually higher concentration and focus. I'd also correspond it to our male brain hemisphere at the same time, whereas areas of theta and delta course to the feminine. But wait, what's this? A system of six even depicted. And this one includes epsilon brain waves. Okay, all right, so a couple of questions I have to ask. Firstly, what's between 30 and 40 hertz? Secondly, what's between 0 0.5 and 1 hertz? And fill, if we were to fill in those blanks with two variables, we'd have a system of eight. But we've also got a lot of other Greek letters left unused, right? So are there other classifications? I'd love to read any comments. But I'm off for now. Take a walk. It's a beautiful day. I'll be finishing up the other four principles someday soon. I want to thank you for listening today. Namaste.